Hello, we are the Spawns, pastoral family from the Point Church in Greenwood, Indiana, and we welcome you into our home. We would love for you to join us for a daily Advent reading through December 25th from the book, The Jesse Tree by missionaries Kent and Kathleen Pelton. Today, our scripture verse is Genesis 2, 15 through 17, and Genesis 3, 1 through 24. The Lord God took the man and put the, him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now the, certain, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, You may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve, because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife to clothe them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Here are two discussion starter questions. Which one of the Ten Commandments did Adam and Eve break when they first sinned? And why do you think that? What do you think? Well, In a way, they were they were coveting the fruits because they were coveting some. 
they were longing for something that did not belong to them. Okay, that's good. Uh -huh. And stealing, so that would be one. Hmm. I think it's adultery. Why is that? Uh, because, you know, they're adults and they took the fruit from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they, they did kind of um, betray God and their relationship with God. They were unfaithful, weren't they? Yeah, unfaithful. Sin is bad business. Nobody wins when somebody sins. Yet, sin is rampant in our world. Every religion in the world has its code of ethics or rules of morality and attempts to keep some sanity in society. Because when people think they can do anything they feel like doing, others end up paying the costs too. Adam and Eve sinned. It affected the rest of humankind after them. Now we know that we are all sinners. This means that every one of us has broken God's laws. Worse, we've broken God's heart. God warned Adam and Eve that if they disobeyed him, the consequences would be death. Maybe Adam and Eve didn't understand how serious death would be. Maybe they didn't even know what death was. But God did know and understand. And when they sinned, it hurt terribly because the most precious part of all of God's creation, which is humankind, and the ones that were created in God's own image now had to die. We have to die. They would never be able to know the true life that God had intended for them. That's where Jesus comes into the picture. God's own son, Jesus, would one day suffer the consequences of man's sin. Even though Jesus was perfect and never sinned, he would die for us so that we could share in his life. It's a beautiful picture of how much God loves us. This is one big reason we celebrate the birth of Jesus every year. It is a celebration of God coming to earth to live with us. Emmanuel, so that we could experience true life instead of death. Perhaps this would be a good time to discuss or just simply to consider anew the consequences of sin, the meaning of death, and the great gift we have in Christ Jesus. Now we're going to go ahead and sing Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. truck going by. <laughs>
go ahead and pray. Father, we pray right now that it, for those of us watching, experiencing this, that you would just uh, look upon us and forgive us of our shortcomings, of our sins, cleanse us and change us, that we may enjoy the life that you intended us to this Christmas season and beyond. May you be glorified in us as you were glorified as a babe those many years ago. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.